Welcome to another edition of Look Smarter Than You Are with Oracle EPM Cloud. Today we will be discussing how to re-enable frameworks in planning. Although we try to be comprehensive in designing planning applications before beginning to build, occasionally we get to a point in development and realize changes are needed to the application. In our example, we created a planning application and enabled both workforce and capital frameworks. We created two custom dimensions in each, named type and department. We now need to have a third custom dimension named business unit. Other development has been taking place, custom cubes built, and the financials framework enabled. One option to get the correct custom dimensions into workforce and capital frameworks would be to blow away the application and start over. We don't want to do that if it can be avoided, and lucky for us, we have another option. To this point, all of our development has been in the test environment. The prod environment has not been created yet. Step one is to create our application in prod exactly the same as it was created in test. This is important. Any deviation from the way the application was created in test could cause issues when we try to import our framework changes later. Create the application in prod with the same application name, description, start end period, first month, currency, and cube names. The new application is now ready for workforce and capital frameworks to be enabled with the additional custom dimension needed. Step two, is to enable workforce with the additional custom dimension. Be sure to enable all the same features that were enabled in test. This includes granularity, expense planning, headcount planning, and workforce management. In our example, we selected employee and job, all of expense planning, did not select headcount planning, and selected all of workforce management. In the section for map rename dimensions, we added type as custom one, and department as custom two, just like it was done in test. Then we added business unit as custom three. The other dimensions remain checked and we also modified the name for union code as it was done in test. We then enabled the workforce framework. Workforce is now enabled the same as it was originally in test with the addition of the third custom dimension named business unit. Step three is to enable capital with the additional custom dimension. Like we did with workforce, we selected the exact same features for capital that had been originally selected in test. In our example, this was only new capital investment for tangible assets with the number of new assets set to 500. We did not select manage existing assets. In the section for map rename dimensions, we added type as custom one and department as custom two, just like it was done in test. Then we added business unit as custom three. Notice that when the custom dimensions are added, the window that opens already lists the available dimension. This is because they were added in workforce first. Select each dimension from the available list to assign to the appropriate custom dimension. The other dimensions remain checked, and we also modified the name for asset detail as it was done in test. We then enabled the capital framework. Capital is now enabled the same as it was originally in test, with the addition of the third custom dimension named business unit. So far, so good. To recap, we've recreated our application in the prod environment with the same application name and settings and enabled workforce and capital the same with the addition of the third custom dimension. Step four is to export the relevant artifacts from prod so they can be imported to test. We identified these artifacts as necessary to update the frameworks in test with the changes. Calc Manager folders for workforce and capital, modules folders for workforce and capital, and plan type folders for workforce and capital. We only want to update workforce and capital, so it's important to be very selective in which artifacts are included. To export these artifacts, from the Navigator menu, select Migration. Now, from the Categories tab, select Calculation Manager. This will open a window with the artifact list for Calculation Manager artifacts. Expand the folders and check the items for rule sets, OEP WFP, OEP WFSC, OEP REP, and OEP CPX. These are the workforce and capital artifacts in Calc Manager. Click Close. This takes you back to the Categories tab. From there, select Planning. This will open the artifact list for planning artifacts. Expand the folder and check the items for OEP WFP, OEP WFSC, OEP REP, and OEP CPX under plan type. And then 
The modules under configuration, which only shows workforce and capital since that's all that was enabled. Click close. This takes us back to the categories tab again. From there, click export. In the export window that opens, name the file and click OK. Now we can move to the snapshots tab and locate the file we just exported. Click on the three dots and select download. Select the folder location on your PC to save the file and click save. We've now completed what needs to be done in the prod environment. To recap, we recreated our application in prod with the same application name and settings, enabled workforce and capital with the addition of the third custom dimension, and exported the applicable artifacts to our PC. We can now log out of prod and go into test. Once in test, from the navigator menu, select migration. Go to the snapshots tab and click upload. Select the file that we downloaded to our PC. Once the file is uploaded, it will appear in the list of snapshots. Click on the three dots for the file and select import. It may take several minutes for the import process to complete. Once completed, perform a database refresh. The application will now have updated frameworks for workforce and capital that include all three custom dimensions. Thank you for watching, and I hope you find this information useful.